Today on Feats of Strength, we took a beautiful drive up to the sound martial arts in Squamish, British Columbia. There I was able to drop in on a training session with UFC bantamweight Cole the Coltrane Smith, where he was preparing for an upcoming fight against fellow undefeated bantamweight Miles Johns at UFC Fight Night 158 in front of a hometown crowd in Vancouver, Canada. I want to try and get my foot on the outside of his foot, okay? And when he moves right, I'm going to move right. Okay, and he moves left or right, I'm going to go south off. And when he moves to his... Yeah, that's me. Despite sporting a pair of 16-ounce gloves and shin pads, I had actually expected to come in for some jujitsu, only to find out upon arrival that it was a kickboxing sparring kind of day. Uh, it went okay. Nevertheless, I had a great time getting to train with these guys and was fortunate enough to sit down with Cole afterwards and talk all things fight. Saw some good rounds, everybody's working hard, so you guys know what to do, man. Let's just stay in the gym, let's stay active, let's keep training. Okay, sound up for you guys, nice and loud. One, two, three, stop! Thank you, partners. So we're here with uh, Cole Smith, a uh, new addition to the UFC, a relatively new addition to the UFC, fighting on uh, the UFC Vancouver card in September, and Liam, is that right? Yeah, Liam, yeah. 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 And we're here at uh, Sunny Chivas in Squamish, BC. That's right, right? Okay, cool. Um, I guess while we're on that, like if you could just take us through like what is the significance of this place? I've seen you post it a t a once or twice on, on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's uh, it's like a landmark here in Squamish. Yeah. It's a, uh, it used to be Mags 99, but they took that one down and now they put up something cheaper. So. I don't know. Everybody loves it here. You know, it's a good environment. You know, it's pretty sweet inside. If you can, you know, the cameras can check around. It's pretty yeah, yeah. sweet in here. You know? And uh, the food is long, so I love it here. It's like fried chicken and like Mexican food. Right? Yeah, yeah, so it's like yeah. uh, chimichangas are good, porters are good. This guy's fried chicken looks real good. We're gonna have any of it. Right now, so right now, yeah, you're rocking a salad. That's mostly just for the fight stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta cut weight, right? So, okay. okay. Well, I can't be uh, indulging right now. I wish I could. Uh, I guess I've wondered, like, uh, the diet of a uh, professional fighter, right? Like, is it kind of whatever you want, and then during the cut period, you're just... Yeah. The fight is the easiest part, you know? It's the, the cutting all the weight and all that kind of stuff. That's the hard part. But, uh, no, I definitely don't fit this into my... Normal diet, unless maybe it's like a Saturday or something. Yeah. It's cheap, you know? It's definitely like, uh, like sort of. Thing. Yeah, 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 definitely. When you gotta cut a lot of weight, it's pretty obvious, you know. Expel as many calories as you can, and consume as less little calories. As you can, so. Okay. It's a pretty easy process, right? right? I guess maybe if you don't mind giving like a brief overview of sort of, yeah, I guess who you are in your history, like how you came to where you are now. There was a gym up here in Squamish and they, uh, they were doing jiu-jitsu twice a week, so I decided to do that. My brother kind of pushed me into it. And then I was pretty good at that, you know, and then I, and then I started doing tournaments and I won some gold medals and that was pretty cool. And then, I got into battlefield and I started doing amateur fights and then I uh, I was in the cage warming up right. with Jeremy Kennedy. Okay, yeah. And uh, and uh, I, I heard he lived in Thailand, so I just told him, hey, I'm gonna move out to Thailand with you. I was just joking. And then after the 
fight, he's like, oh, he's like, if you're serious, I'll get you sponsored out here. So I was like, oh, shit, all right. So I, I did it, you know. And I lived and trained out there for about two years, and it was fantastic. I mean, I had a bunch of fights out there, 15 or 16 Muay Thai fights, some boxing fights. And I got a lot of experience. Uh, they offered me a title fight within a week's notice. So I was in Thailand. I, my brother flew me home to fight for an amateur title. You know, a lot of money to fight for this amateur title. Uh, but it was a good decision. We won that fight, and then uh, and then I moved back out before officially turning pro. And then I fought Jamie Siraj for the battlefield uh, bantamweight belt. Yeah. It was a really good fight. Uh, and then I just kind of kept taking fights. I moved back out to Thailand for a little bit, and traveled around, and uh, yeah, I, I made it made to the UFC when I was six and zero. Oh, here I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sort of amateur career and like having a lot of those fights in Thailand definitely helped. It's like it's an important part of the progression as opposed to like some people just go pro like, right away, right? Yeah, that, 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 that's crazy to me to just go pro, man. Yeah, yeah. You're, fighting is, is a lot of experience, you know? Yeah. You just go out there swinging like a madman because you're not used to the pressure and used to the moving around and feeling out process. Yeah. You're gonna get some, some really shitty losses early in your career. Man. Right. It's, it's so hard to play catch up, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like Tristan Connolly, you know? Yeah. His first fight was in Japan. They brought him out there to Japan. His first fight, they're not bringing you to win, they're yeah, bringing you to lose. You know, he fought a guy with 30 fights. He lost, obviously. He fought a couple guys that he probably wasn't ready for early in his career, you know? So he got a couple crummy losses. But he's 8 and 1 in his last 9, you know? But he's 13 and 6. So if he didn't have those, those crummy losses early in his career, man, he would be just, his record would be unbelievable. So. You know, it's because he didn't take those amateur, he didn't have any amateur fights. So so not doing that really, uh, you know, you lose out on those. I've lost as an amateur, and, 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 it, and the taste of losing, you know, it's free. It's a free taste of a loss instead of going to pro, losing, and it's not free anymore. It costs you, you know what I mean? So I got the experience of losing as an amateur and how much it sucks when it doesn't even count, and now it counts. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you never want to taste that loss ever again. Right. You do things a little different, you train a little different, yeah, eat a little yeah, yeah. healthier. You know, you don't make those, those little yeah, shitty mistakes. Yeah, yeah. And you've spoken, I think I heard you spoke before in another interview about like, that there's actually more pressure before getting into the UFC because like you need a, almost a spotless record, right? Yeah, definitely. I don't know, that's just how I feel. Right. I feel like since making it to the UFC, there's a lot of pressures off now, you know? I'm fighting the best guys in the world now. Right. You know, if you lose, you lose, you know right. what I mean? You're fighting the best. Yeah. I've, I've made it. I've done what I've said I was going to do. You know, obviously I have a lot more goals, but uh, that was the first one accomplished. But fighting locally, I feel like you, know, you can't even lose a round or else your credit goes down. If you right. lose some some weird loss cut or something weird. You know, you, you gotta fight those you gotta, another fight just to get back in the win column and you know a six months loss and so it's yeah. Super nice, so 
I love the PI. Do you feel that like now that you're in the UFC? Because I've always felt like as a fan of the UFC, I've always felt like there was this sort of um, almost dichotomy or just sort of like a mutually exclusive philosophy between like winning versus putting on a show. Do you find that those are like an opposition at all? Uh, yeah, well, it's weird. The UFC, oh, they, they're not quite sure, you know what yeah, I mean? Sometimes, sometimes it, they're like, we want guys who are winners, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then those guys tend to be a little more boring because right. they're doing what they have to do to win. At the best, at the highest level, right? And then yeah. the guys go out, some guys go banging and they're yeah, swinging yeah. and then they get cut because they have yeah. a couple losses. Right, right. You know, but then, but then yeah, they go on and they'll be like, well, we want exciting fights. Yeah, and we, so it's kind of like, right, right. I feel like I'll be exciting no matter what happens. You know what I mean? I won't be in the boring fight, but, you know, you kind of want it both ways. Obviously, yeah, you don't yeah, want to yeah. be a totally boring fighter and yeah. just kind of stalemating the fight. But uh, I also think you're in there to win. Just so. knowing who your opponent is, like, does that make a difference to you? Or do you is there, like, so I've heard you say, like, uh, as far as, like, the tape and stuff goes and study, like, that's, like, your brothers do that? When I was in Thailand and I took a bunch of Muay Thai fights, when I go to the arena, they, they don't tell you who you're fighting. You have no idea what who it is. So you go to the arena and you ask your trainer, who am I fighting? And they point at some guy and, okay, that's the guy you're fighting. And you size him up and, okay, that looks pretty even. You don't know if he's had 100 fights, 150 fights, if he's had two fights, if he's had 10 fights. You have no idea. So doing all that has kind of given me a, a, I'm a little bit more comfortable with just accepting it and yeah. it is what it is, you know what I mean? Um, I let my brother kind of watch the fights and he picks up things that we need to work on and we go from there. I'll watch it once or twice to kind of get a feel of what I'm doing and who I'm fighting, but other than that, I, I don't really... I'm one of the best in the world, man. If I compete to the best of my abilities, then I feel like it shouldn't really matter. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you, Liam. Yeah. Man of many words. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs>